Do you experience bloating? I know I did for many, many years. It was very, very uncomfortable. Uh, it seemed like almost everything I ate, I, was, I felt like I was pregnant and it, it was very difficult to sleep. It was difficult to constantly suck in my stomach to try to avoid anyone knowing that I was actually bloated. So this is what you need to know about bloating. There are many different causes of bloating, okay? There's not just one cause. So I'm gonna go through all the causes, but there's a real simple thing you can do to identify where it's coming from, okay? Number one, take a look at when you started getting bloating, okay? Was it yesterday? Was it today? What time did you start getting bloating? And then what did you eat right before? Was it the obvious junk food or processed food? Was it sugar alcohols? Let's say you started the ketogenic diet and you had some, I don't know, xylitol, erythritol, or mannitol, whatever, and then that created the bloating because that was new, okay? Or you saw in one of my videos that I recommended consuming seven to 10 cups of salad, and now you're bloating, okay? Or was it that cruciferous vegetable that you normally don't consume and then you start getting bloated, or maybe it was dairy, okay? That's a common cause of bloating. Or you bought a keto snack or a keto bar that had corn fiber, for example, which was a new ingredient that you added to your diet, and now you're pregnant. Well, guess what? All you need to do is just avoid that thing and you're not gonna bloat anymore. Or like in practice, I had this one lady who came in and she says, I'm bloating like I'm pregnant. And then she came in the following day <laughs> And guess what? She was pregnant. So your bloating could be that you're pregnant. But very simply, just find out when you're bloating, what did you introduce that was new, and just avoid that thing. But let's say you have bloating. Is there anything you could do to get rid of the bloating? Yes, there is. So if this is the right side of the, underneath the rib cage, and this is your left side, right through like this, you simply could massage the two key parts of your digestive system that are many times responsible for bloating. One is the gallbladder on the right side, or it could be the pancreas, which I'm gonna talk about. So what you're gonna do is you just kind of start massaging right underneath the rib cage, okay? And I like to just press about an inch off the midline to the right, and about an inch down from your rib cage, maybe two inches down, and press right into that area, and just kind of massage to the left and the right, and just kind of hold this point for about one to two minutes. Just don't use a, a sharp object when you're pressing in here. You can use a massage tool or the end of some dull um, piece of wood, but don't use a sharp object, okay? And then you just kind of work on the left side and you start massaging these two areas, and you're gonna help kind of decongest these organs and get rid of a lot of bloating, and it'll either push uh, gas through or fluid. Now, one side note I wanna mention, uh, one of my patients noticed that their constant bloating went away when they went down to Florida and laid on the beach, okay? And that was because this person was going through a massive stress and every time they experienced sun and a reduction of cortisol stress, their stomach reduced to the point where it was flat. And that is because cortisol or stress creates inflammation and swelling in the midsection. Okay, so that's just a side note. If you notice that you go through a stress event and you notice your stomach is distended, especially as the day goes on. But let's go through each organ and talk about the potential cause of your bloating. Let's start with the stomach here. If the stomach does not have enough acid or the pH of the stomach is too alkaline, okay, because you're taking antacids or whatever, you can experience either acid reflux, okay, or GERD, or heartburn, or indigestion. Indigestion is a real good clue that you don't have enough acid in your stomach, or bloating, okay? So if you have bloating and you have indigestion or acid reflux, then it's more likely that it's coming from the stomach. The thing about the stomach is it's one of the first places to help you start to digest, okay? And if you don't have enough acid, like a lot of people, from that point on, the food stuff will kind of go through this whole chain of events. And if it's undigested here, it's gonna be undigested here, and these organs are gonna to have to work harder. So it's very important to have enough acid in your stomach to start the process of breaking down uh, the protein, especially uh, with the right amount of acid, okay? So if you need acid, what you can do is take something called betaine hydrochloride, 
It comes in a supplement and you would take maybe five or six of these with a meal. And that's going to greatly help the stomach regain its acid. The other thing you could take is apple cider vinegar, either on an empty stomach or with food. So you would take one or two tablespoons and some water and that will help your digestion, okay? So that would be the stomach. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the gallbladder. The purpose of the gallbladder is to concentrate bile, which is like a detergent that helps you break down fat, by a factor of 5x. So it helps to concentrate the bile so when you eat, it's released into the small intestine and it mixes with the pancreatic enzymes to help you break down certain things, okay? Now, if the gallbladder does not have enough bile, maybe you don't have a gallbladder, or maybe it's just sluggish, you'll get burping, belching, or bloating, or you'll feel nauseated, and there's a lot of symptoms, but you can feel bloating if you don't have enough bile salts, okay? So, if you bloat and you have this belching and burping, and maybe you have a a full sensation underneath the right rib cage, or you have pain that's going into the right shoulder, right through here, it could be up, up back through here, it could be up here, or in your neck, then suspect gallbladder, and then you need some purified bile salts or gallbladder formula to help assist this gallbladder. So that would be some clues that it could be that you need help right through in here. The other thing you can do and you can use this also to help figure out if it is the gallbladder, is just press underneath the right rib cage. You start massaging underneath the right rib cage, and if your discomfort on the right side goes away or you feel less bloating, chances are it could be that you just need a little help with uh, more bile salts. All right, now we have the pancreas, right? Pancreas is more on the left side, but it does cross over a little bit to the center, maybe to the right side. But if your pancreas needs help, let's say you don't have enough enzymes, okay, because of various reasons, maybe you're a diabetic or you've eaten a lot of carbs in the past and you're getting a loss of function in the pancreas. The pancreas just makes enzymes. You could get diarrhea, you can get floating stool, like kind of like a greasy stool that floats. That means you don't have enough enzymes to break down that fat, it's called lipase. And guess what? You're going to get a lot of bloating. If this is the case, okay, you need more enzymes. So you'd want to get some supplement that has a wide variety of enzymes. You also want to make sure that you consume uh, food with enzymes, maybe some raw like salads, okay, to get more enzymes to help you digest, as well as fermented food like sauerkraut, things like that would help take the pressure off the pancreas. The pancreas also improves when you cut down the high carbs, okay? Because the more sugar you have, the more insulin that's produced, the more the pancreas has to work harder. So that's the pancreas, okay? So with the stomach, you would need more acid. With the gallbladder, bile. With the pancreas, enzymes. Moving right along, we have this thing called the small intestine, which is right in the center. The small intestine is where you have 90% of all the digestion, okay? And so the food particles that are broken down by the stomach into amino acids, the gallbladder breaking down the fat, the, the pancreas helping breaking down food, and then the small intestine, which also has enzymes, but it's not supposed to have a lot of bacteria. A lot of the bacteria, the good bacteria, should be in this large intestine, okay, further down. But you have this long pipe that the food should go through and the enzymes and other things should act on the food to break it down and then help it be absorbed so it can go in through uh, the liver and other places in the body. But a lot of people get bloating in the small intestine, okay? They actually have fermentation going on in the small intestine. Fermentation is the action of a microbe on a, a food, like a carbohydrate, a fiber, or sugar, okay? Now, a, an example of this would be uh, with my chickens, okay? So I have about 16 chickens and we eat their eggs. And what I do is I ferment the food, okay? The, when you ferment the food, you actually soak it in water for three days and the bacteria that's normally in the grains, and which by the way, they're organic grains, is gonna act on the carbohydrate, break them down, and make it much easier for the chicken to digest that food. Plus, in the fermentation process, you get a lot of 
uh, gases that are released like carbon dioxide. As you can see in this image right here, we have a lot of carbon dioxide and other gases being produced by the microorganisms. It looks like it's boiling, but it's just releasing gas. But guess what? When you have this excess uh, fermentation going on in your small intestine, that gas is going to produce a lot of distension and bloating. So you could have either fluid retention, okay, going on in the small intestine, or gas. Because if you're not able to digest certain foods in the small intestine, you're going to retain fluid. And that's one version of bloating, but it can also be a combination of gas as well. So this condition in the small intestine is called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Okay. This is a situation where you have bacteria that normally should be in the large intestine, but it's in the small intestine. It's in the wrong place. And the food coming down is being fermented in the wrong place. And you're going to get a lot of gas and fluid retention. And how do we know you have SIBO? Well, if you consume probiotics, guess what? You're going to feel worse. You're going to get more bloating. Or if you consume more salad or fiber, it's going to be worse. You're going to get more bloating. Why? Because you have these bacteria that are ready to uh, ferment it in, at this level, and you're going to feel worse if you consume that. So that's one indication to know that potentially you have SIBO. You can go get a test. So what do you do if you have SIBO? Well, you want to avoid probiotics and you want to avoid fiber. So you probably want to do carnivore for a while, which means you're not going to be consuming any uh, plant fiber, okay, any vegetables for a while, maybe one or two months to reset your system. The other thing you should take is oregano and garlic to act as a natural antibiotic. You can also do clove and thyme and even sage, things like that, and that will act as a, a natural antibiotic, but these two work really good. Another really important thing to do would be fasting, intermittent fasting. Fast as long as you can. That will help to reset and clean this out. Okay? So that's the small intestine. All right. Now we're at the large intestine. You can also have excessive amounts of fermentation going on, giving you bloating and gas. If you have this situation, it could be you just have an imbalance in microbes and you have the wrong amount of certain microbes versus the other, in which case a wide range of vegetables might be helpful, uh, more fiber. A lot of people that I know that have problems down here have like rarely have any vegetables. In fact, the average person consumes, I think a cup and a half of vegetables every single day. It's just not enough. So they, the microbes live on the fiber, but if you're not feeding them on a regular basis, they might not grow to the, the amount that you want or to the diversity that you need. So a probiotic and fiber would be beneficial for this situation. So if you feel better when you take um, a probiotic or fiber or a combination like sauerkraut has good bacteria and fiber, if you feel better when you take that, chances are your problem is in the large intestine. If you feel worse when you consume sauerkraut, chances are you might have a problem in the small intestine. Okay, so that's just a, a way to differentiate those two. But anyway, I wanted to go through the whole system to help you understand the different parts of this digestive system and the potential cause of your bloating so you can fully eliminate it. Now, the other thing I want to mention, if you're not on healthy keto and you're not doing intermittent fasting, I would first go for that. Implement that before you even get into any of these things because you just might need to have the correct eating plan and the correct time of eating to correct the whole thing. So if you want that information, I put a very simple playlist. You can learn this very quickly right here. Check it out.